If you're a Node developer that has not yet grasped the inner workings of Node itself, you might be deploying applications with some configurations that are defaulted based on when you installed Node. A quick example of this is uh, you might be deploying an API server with a single thread and one event loop when in fact if you had a little bit more Node.js skills you'd know that you could take advantage of some multi-threaded capabilities. But in today's video I want to touch on something that's a lot easier to understand and more importantly to configure that could very well double the performance of some of your Node.js applications transactions depending on what it is it's doing and obviously the specs of your machine. And the configuration that I'm referring to here is the libuv's thread pool. So let's get started. Welcome, I'm John Jardine and this is Bleeding Code, your one-stop shop for all things Moonstack related, that's Node, React, Mongo, integration and supporting technologies. I'm currently on a drive to bring out a number of videos that focus on Node.js performance optimizations. This is the fifth installment of that series and if this kind of content is what you're looking for, be sure to give this video a like and join my channel by clicking on the subscribe button as well as the bell icon to make sure that you get notified because I release content every one to two weeks. Now the Node.js runtime environment is made up of a couple of moving parts and most of us will know that one of those moving parts is the Google V8 engine which is responsible for executing our JavaScript logic. But there is a lesser known sort of unsung hero which is the libuv library, excuse me, libuv library which is responsible for performing asynchronous I.O. tasks which occur on the operating system layer and was what we regard as heavy duty tasks. These can be working with files and folders, uh, TCP, UDP transactions, compression and encryption to, to name a few. Libuv uh, manages these tasks synchronously and asynchronously and at the same time ensuring that our application is never blocked and it achieves this in the following ways. Many of the tasks against the operating system are asynchronous tasks which is fine. LibUV will manage those tasks accordingly but there are still many tasks that occur on the operating system level that are synchronous and if not carefully managed will block our application and prevent it from handling incoming requests. And it's for this reason that LibUV has what we call a thread pool which contains a number of threads that it will offload these synchronous tasks to still allowing our application to run uh, asynchronously without any kind of blocks. So it's very important and very very powerful. And we are going to explore this thread pool because by default uh, libuv will only spawn four threads but with modern machines we can actually increase that amount uh, and take advantage of a lot more performance than what's actually happening by default. In the following demonstrations we're going to answer a couple of questions. Number one, what is the current setting of the, the libuv's thread pool and how many transactions uh, can actually get processed? Number two, what kind of tasks uh, get handed over to the thread pool so that we know if we are in fact running a task with that could be affected by the size of the thread pool. And uh, number three, how do we can change and configure the size of the thread pool uh, to take advantage of our current machine specs? And finally, what is the recommended size of that thread pool based on our environment? So let's get going. So on my screen I have a node application that's got a number of folders. Each of these folders is relevant to a video as part of my Node.js performance optimization series and we're going to be focusing on the fifth folder today which is 05 libuv thread pool. Now this whole project is available on GitHub and I will provide links in the description so be sure to go and check this out. It does look confusing but like I said it's only relevant to the folder that we're going to be working with over and above package.json. So uh, I'm going to expand this and we can see that I've got a .env file which just has the node env to production and I'm exposing this application on port 6000. And we're going to start with our first test where all I'm doing is I'm requiring those .env configurations. I'm setting up a very basic uh, express and HTTP server and I've got encrypt, uh, bcrypt over here which I am going to expose via this endpoint called forward slash bcrypt and all I'm going to do is I'm going to auto salt and hash a password and send that hash password back as the response. Now to test all of this I'm going to use a performance benchmarking tool called autocannon. 
You can use AutoCannon as well. It's written completely in Node and it's very easy to install. NPM install globally AutoCannon and I will provide links to their uh, website and their documentation because it's really, really easy to get set up. You can, of course, use your own benchmark performance tools such as Artillery, Apache Benchmark or K6 or as long as they can perform any kind of load test against an HTTP uh, request and that they can help us understand what is the average request per second, you're free to use any uh, tool that you want on your side and you will still be able to follow along with this video. So for our first test, I'm gonna start up this uh, JavaScript file and all I'm gonna do is I'm going to run AutoCannon on this side and I'm gonna point it to this endpoint and I'm using the default configurations for AutoCannon. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna run 10 concurrent users for 10 seconds and it's just gonna load test this URL. Right, so welcome back everyone. I fast forwarded past 10 seconds and we can see that we got an average of 212 requests per second. Now, the first question we're gonna answer over here is, is this bcrypt hash uh, being passed through to the libuv's threat pool? That's the first thing that we wanna know because it's not really, uh, there's no real easy way to understand this. You, it doesn't really get explained in their documentation. So, but there is a, uh, an easy way for us to find out if this hash is being passed through to the libuv thread pool and what we do is we go and change the size of the thread pool we know that we know now that by default it is four threads that's the default configuration but we can override this value and we do that by adding a new environment variable uv underscore thread pool underscore size and what we're going to do is we're going to set this value to one restart our server and rerun our test so welcome back, we've run our test and we can see now that the average request per second for that bcrypt transaction has dropped all the way from 212 to 63. This helps us realize that bcrypt is being passed to that thread pool and therefore uh, we can actually change the performance of, of this transaction based on our machine specs which I'm going to get to next. Now for my machine, I'm going to go to my Mac preferences and I can see that my Mac has got six physical CPU cores. This theoretically means that I can go and change the thread pool, thread pool size from the default of four to six, which will take advantage of, of each one of my physical CPUs. And I should be able to get a lot more re requests per second when I run the benchmark test. So let's go try that quickly. Let's change the size to six, resave, rerun my server and rerun the test. So welcome back. We can see over here, we've now got an average of 280 requests per second, where initially we were averaging about 212. So yes, we can in fact increase the thread pool size to match that of our physical CPU cores. But there's more, because the modern Intel cores have got hyper-threading. Hyper-threading means that each physical CPU core can actually run what is called two logical calls or in fact two threads. And in my case, this means that if I've got a MacBook with six physical CPUs, I've actually got 12 logical cores. So what I can do on my side is I can go and change the thread pool size to match that of the 12 logical cores. And let's see what happens if I rerun this benchmark test. And we're back. And now we can see that with 12 logical with the thread pool size set to 12, matching that the number of uh, logical cores that I'm running on my side, we've managed to improve the performance from 280 requests per second to 377. So that's insane, thinking that we originated from 212. So we're all the way up from 212 to 377 by just changing the thread pool size to match that of our logical cores. Now, libuv allows you to change the thread pool all the way to 1024. But the, the truth is, and that comes to our next question is, how do we know what should we set this to? And the answer is kind of something I've already done over here is you would set it to the number of logical cores your machine or virtual machine or whatever you deploy in your application to runs. If you do anything over and above that, it's not really going to change. The number of requests per second is not really going to change. It's, it's, it's quite useless. So I would, I would recommend setting it to the number of logical cores. That's actually a very, very good practice. Now, in knowing that, we have a next issue. How do we know how many logical cores are in fact available when we deploy our application to a specific environment? How do we even know that there's hyper-threading enabled? Well, the good news is there's a nice little module that's native to Node called OS, 
and it allows us to run a function called CPUs which helps us determine the number of logical cores our machine or virtual machine is running and if the if hyperthreading is not enabled it will just actually return the number of physical cores so this is a nice very powerful little function available over here and just to see this in action on my machine I'm going to stop this and I'm now going to run this JavaScript file and what I've done over here is I've uh, console logged the logical count and we can see over there it's 12 and this is the information that can be returned as an array uh, when you do run this function so knowing that this function is available it means that we actually can go and implement something that will allow our application to dy dynamically determine the logical cores on the machine it's been deployed to and go and set the thread pool size to that uh, to that amount so that comes to our last part of this uh, tutorial and that is how to go and set the the thread pool size for one's application so the one that, the one way that I've already shown you is by just providing it in the .env file the second way is you can provide a dynamic or you can provide it straight in the command line before you before you type in node uh, JavaScript file you can actually just go and first set the UV underscore thread pool size over here and then run your uh, JavaScript file but the third one is you can run it inside your application and that is our third test over here notice what I do at the top I require my .env configurations but I wouldn't go and put the thread pool size inside there because I want the size to be dynamic so I'll require OS and then I'll immediately at the top of the root of my JavaScript uh, application I will go and set process.env.uv thread pool size to whatever the amount of logical cores the machine is running giving me a dynamic way of determining what the thread pool size should be a lot of people usually don't recommend doing it this way and rather doing it uh, in the former ways that I have shown but if you want this dynamic capability you're gonna have to resort to this just do this with caution because know that once the libuv thread pool is initialized you cannot go and change that amount until you've restarted your node.js server so that's it for this video i hope you've enjoyed it and that has been easy enough to follow along if you like if you did like this video please give it a, a thumbs up and be sure to join my channel by clicking on the subscribe button and the bell icon i'm releasing content like this every one to two weeks and i've still got a number of videos uh, in store for this Node.js performance optimization series. So until next time, cheers.